Good Hi. afternoon. I'm Don Allen Kroll, the Cantor Emeritus of Temple Shalom, and today's date is June 2nd, 2015. All right. If you will, tell me a little bit about your family, your parents, and even if you know where your grandparents were from, where they all settled. My grandparents are from Poland and Lithuania. Lithuania on my mother's side. Poland when it was Russian on my father's side. Because my father doesn't speak Yiddish, he, speak, he, he spoke Russian. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and not, I didn't hear him speak very much at all Russian. Or Yiddish. My mother spoke Yiddish. My mother's family came from a town that none of none of us, none of the cousins could pronounce. <laughs> uh, it was Nemokst, which we all looked for. We, where is it in Lithuania? And the problem was that when the Russians took over, they changed the name to Nomiskaya. So then we, outside of Vilna, and um, that's still there. I had a cousin recently go and visit it, which is a, a bucket item for me. Um, I don't know if it'll ever happen. So my, the Krolls <clears throat> uh, settled in New Britain, Connecticut, and the Alts, my mother's side, settled in Buffalo, New York, which is where I was raised. And what did your parents do for a living? My mother was a bookkeeper and my father was a salesman for a folding box company, Victor Wagner and Son. What was your neighborhood like as a young child growing up there? The first one or the second one? Uh, whichever. The first one was in a very Jewish area in uh, Buffalo, near the synagogue, in walking distance, because I think my grandfather was Orthodox and the, it was a conservative shul, but it was on the right side of center, if you will. I mean, they were very traditional. I don't remember the men being separated from the women, but um, it was still pretty traditional, and I think my grandfather walked to Temple Beth David on uh, Humboldt Parkway in <laughs> you remember? Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. What did you like to do as a child? What type of hobbies did you have? What did I do as a child? That's a good question because the only thing I can think of is I, I like to listen to music, obviously, and I like to listen to uh, later Broadway shows. It's funny because when everybody would say, oh, Janis Joplin, I love her, oh, you know this Beatles song? It's like, no, but if you ask me to sing a song from Man of La Mancha, I can do it very well. We may have to stop because Jan is here. Uh, what about later on in high school? What kind of interests did you develop then? Well, I was in uh, all of the all of the school shows, and I was in um, theater as well, the variety shows, and all of my friends were in the music department, and I had a great, great childhood. High school was just happy-go-lucky and wonderful. At that time, had you already decided that that would be your career, something in music? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So what did you do right after high school and, and then on to pursue that? After high school, I went into the theater department at Ithaca College and got a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Ithaca. And then in my senior year, well, let's go back a little, in my junior my junior, it must have been my sophomore and junior year, Ithaca College, the theater department had um, a summer stock theater in Martha's Vineyard. So I spent uh, two seasons there. <clears throat> and uh, we did eight shows in nine weeks. So it was grueling, but it was wonderful. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, when I graduated, I auditioned for a, a company in um, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and that's where I got my equity card, which is the uh, 
organization for professional actors. Let's talk about, for just a minute, Jewish background. What holidays did you, you particularly remember and were fond of? Hanukkah. My mother was in the choir at Temple Beth David, and then when it merged, she was in the choir at Temple Beth David near Israel for 50 years. Mm -hmm. She started when she was 16, and when she was 66, and my parents moved to Florida, um, she joined a choir there. And she was the lady, she was the relative who brought the song sheets for Hanukkah because the Cousins Club would get together and there would be a Hanukkah party. And then for Passover, we would travel to New Britain to be with my father's family. So those are the holidays I remember the most. But of course we celebrated Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, you name the holiday. You know, my parents were very active. Was Zionism a part of your life? Oh, yes. How did yes, that yes. play out? Um, it was through Israel bonds. Um, you know, I learned very early that my parents supported Israel through the bonds, and uh, they finally went to Israel after they had retired. And I know that um, in the reform movement, before Israel was a state, the reform movement felt we don't need to press on for, for, you know, a Jewish state. We're happy in the United States. And um, so even to this day, the Israel Bonds um, office in Dallas says they still have difficulty getting hardened reform Jews to buy anything like an Israel Bond. But um, I have Israel Bonds. What path did you take? after graduating college? After graduating college, I went right to New York and um, I uh, applied to NYU in their theater department and I applied to um, Hebrew Union College, Jewish Institute of Religion, the Debbie Friedman School of Sacred Music, and I said, okay, whichever one I get into, that's what I will pursue. So. I got into um, Hebrew Union College and began to pursue a career in the cantorate, which was interesting because it was like out of the blue that I said, you know, I really should look into being, becoming a cantor. I went to the rabbi, in the Saint Rabbi Goldfarb in Ithaca, um, and he told me there was, um, um, the, the, the Reform Seminary was Hebrew Union College, and the Je Jewish Theological Seminary was um, the conservative movement's um, seminary. So I applied to both. And um, when I had to sign a piece of paper that said I would be Shomer Shabbos and I would have to keep kosher, I said, and give up cheeseburgers? I don't think so. So um, I started my studies at uh, Hebrew Union. How long was that, and then, then where did that take you after that when you graduated? Let's see. It, it's a five-year course, and I was in New York City, surrounded by auditions and theaters, and so after the first semester, I dropped out and started to pursue a career in the theater first. And... Um, and in the meanwhile, I got married. We lived in New Jersey. I get into a Broadway show on the town with Bernadette Peters. From there, I got an agent, and I started uh, doing shows, tours, and um, I did a, a tour of uh, the uh, Man of La Mancha, which is, a, that's the picture on the wall, me as the barber. Um, and I did it with John Raitt, Alan Jones, um, Howard Keel. So, and then, soon after that, I didn't get a job, and I was very upset that I wasn't working. Little did I know, eight months was not so terrible not to be working, that there are people who don't work for eight years. 
But I said, this, you know, if I'm going to raise a family, this is not a way to raise a family, to be on the road and then come home. And then, so then I reapplied to uh, HUC, got in, and, and because it was a five-year course, the guys that I started w out with in 69 uh, were just graduating when I went back. So it was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I've got, I'm going to do five years. So I completed the course, um, got a full-time position with my student job, became a full-time position in uh, Nyack, New York, became, um, I was there for 10 years as their music director, bar mitzvah, tutor and all that. And then the theater bug bit me again and I moved out to California. <clears throat> and uh, the only way that I could make ends meet was to become a part-time cantor at different synagogues and a part-time teacher. And I really never had an opportunity to audition for pilot season because it ran into the high holidays a lot of times. So I said, okay. Actually, my partner, Jan, said, um, why don't you just pick one synagogue? Because Monday was substituting as a bar mitzvah tutor at Wilshire Boulevard Temple. Tuesday was uh, being the bar mitzvah tutor at uh, Beth Shalom in Santa Monica. And Wednesday, blah, 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 blah. So, um, so I took a full-time position in Westminster. And then we moved to Albuquerque for two years. And Albuquerque, which I loved a lot. I have a love-hate relationship with Albuquerque. <laughs> Um, and then we moved to Dallas because there was an opportunity here at Temple Shalom. And so how long have you been here? Uh, this is our 19th year. We got here in 1996. So in 2016 it'll be our 20th year, mm -hmm. July. What are some of the highlights that you can remember about when you, coming to Dallas and working in the synagogue that you worked at? The the community was um, very accepting. Um, they weren't concerned that I was in a gay relationship. They were more concerned to find out if Jan was Jewish or not. That's what they were worried about. I enjoyed working with the kids. I enjoyed working um, with the adult choirs. Every bar mitzvah student was going to be a star up on the bima, whether they wanted to or not, I make sure that uh, they were as well prepared as they could be, and if there were portions of the service that they couldn't do, I said, don't worry, we'll do it together. Because I've been through some, I've been to some ceremonies where it was excruciating to hear the kids get through their Torah portion, their Haftarah portion, and the temple allowed me to do shows as well, so I could do either a variety show. I did a show with um, um, another cantor from Fort Worth. And um, my very good friend, um, Lynn Metrick, may she rest in peace, she was very active in the Dallas theater world. And she would connect me with people from the Dallas theater world mm -hmm. to perform at the temple, which was great. So I could do both. Do you have anybody that you would consider your mentor through the years? Through the years. First, at school, there was uh, Cantor Lawrence Avery, who just passed away. Just passed away. He was everybody's mentor. I mean, on Facebook, you know, everybody was singing his praises and how wonderful, and he was just a terrific, terrific teacher, mentor, person. Um, and then I would say my good friend Elliot Dicker, Cantor Elliot Dicker, who lives in Boca Raton, um, he, he gets me through, is, if there's anything that I don't know or don't understand, or if I have to sing something that's a little more traditional, he'll say, why don't you do this piece? Now we did study at Hebrew Union College, we were exposed to um, traditional as well as reform music. But once you're in a reform setting and you don't use what you've learned to daven, um, you, you know, what do they say? Use it or lose it. So I made sure, however, 
when I learned how to lay in Torah um, for the high holidays, for Purim, I would chant um, in the correct nusach, the correct trope for the holidays, and I would make sure that the kids who, who did, or the adults who did Torah portions at the high holidays, they also would uh, chant in the right trope. I'm not going to call you retired, but now that you're semi-retired, yes. what are your aspirations? My aspirations or what's reality? Okay. What would you like to do oh, going forward? Uh, well, I would like to, at this point, uh, find my way back into the Dallas theater world. I've had four opportunities to appear on stage in Dallas. I did a one-man show uh, about the life of Danny Kaye, which I performed twice at Theater 3. And then they did a show called Carolina Change, and they asked if I would play Grandpa Stopnik. And I said, you know, I can't do Friday nights or Saturday matinees. And they said, we'll get you an understudy. <laughs> and then um, I got a call. Actually, Jack Alder, the artistic director, who just unfortunately passed away, he suggested to the director of um, So Help Me God, which is a, an obscure play, he said, would you be willing to play the producer? Because we think he was Jewish. I said, sure. And then, so the show closed at the end of um, the summer. And that when, like Sunday, that Wednesday was Air of Rosh Hashanah. So I, um, you know, jumped into doing, I do the High Holidays at the Legacy in Willow Bend. And um, Michael Serechio, who directed me in the Danny Kay show, he called me uh, Friday and he said, how would you like to play the George, George Burns role in The Sunshine Boy? And I said, uh, I don't know. I said, I can't look at the script until Sunday or Saturday night because that's, as he said, it's, I said, it's Yom Kippur. He said, oh, that's right, that's right. He said, well, you have to make a decision. And I have to, had to discuss it with Jan. And uh, he, Jan said, okay. And she wants you to bubble her in Kempola. <laughs> and um, I said, by the way, when does the show go up? He said, oh, this coming Thursday. <laughs> so for somebody who's scared that he can't learn lines, I learned the script in five days. Actually, we, we, the first preview was Wednesday night, so, or th I can't remember. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind going back into that aspect of my life. Okay. But I also teach at the J in the Melton program. I teach in the Gesher part of the Melton program, which um, are the electives that people choose to take after they finished with the basic course. Which we love. Thank you. Um, how has the city of Dallas changed since you've been here? Well, let's see. I would say they're more accepting of my sexual orientation. Before, when we got here, you know, the rabbi said, play it down. Rabbi Roseman, who was the senior rabbi at the time, said, everybody knows, but you don't have to throw it in their face. So we said, okay. When I retired, um, at my final service on May 31st, um, I thanked everybody. I thanked the rabbi, I thanked the assistant rabbi, I thanked the educator, and I thanked my best friend. And I looked at the congregation and I said, Jan, who is my husband. They all broke into applause. It was unbelievable. Because my first year here, when Cantor Schrepker was being installed at his temple, he came to my installation, he invited me to his. I got two anonymous phone calls saying, you should not be on the bima. You have no right being on our bima. And if you go on the bima, uh, I will walk out of the sanctuary. So I went to the rabbi and I said, you know, is this the attitude of um, all of your congregants? And he said, no, you are welcome to come here, you and your partner, anytime you want to. So that's one thing that I've seen. You know, the, the Jewish, as, as a professional Jew, 
you're kind of, you don't have much time to go on the outside of Jewish life, the synagogue. We do, I mean, we had opportunities to go to the theater, but to um, experience Dallas in its fullest was not so easy. Now, we're enjoying Clyde Warren Park, um, Aurora is coming back in uh, October of this year, which is the uh, outdoor installation. <clears throat> and uh, of course, we saw the building of the Windspear and the Wiley, and so we've been very active uh, theater goes to those two theaters as well. well. Culturally, I think Dallas has made a lot of strides. Yes, in yes, the yes, years, yes. Even the years you've been here. Oh, absolutely. The Nasher Sculpture Center opened when we were here. Um, so when we had our commitment ceremony here, we told everybody, you must go to the Nasher Sculpture Center because it just opened and it's, you know, it put the art, the art part of Dallas, the cultural part, on the map. Because mm -hmm. there were people from all over the world, important people who came to uh, see what Mr. Nasher had collected. What are you personally most proud of? Can you think of anything or a couple of things? I think uh, the level of performance for the youth choir just kept building and building and building. And I love, loved working with them. Um, I love choosing music. And I always try to find the most uh, contemporary music that would speak to them, that they would enjoy doing. Um, Oh, there was something else, and I forgot what it was. Oh, Bar Mitzvah Kids. Mm -hmm. I just enjoyed every week watching the kids um, take their place in the adult world of Judaism. And in closing, is there anything else you can think of that you'd like to add to this? Anything. Anything. Anything out there. Anything at all. Well, Jan and I have been very fortunate. We... Um, enjoy all the members of the congregation. We enjoy uh, the friends that we've made here in Dallas. We live in a home that we probably couldn't afford anywhere else. It's interesting because people have said to, us, said to us, so where do you want to move? To which we both say, what are you talking about? We never really discussed it, nor do we want to move anyplace else. We're very lucky to be here. Very good. Thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome. With me.